So, <clears throat> let's talk about MVVM Lite quickly. So it's an open source library developed in 2009, published in 2009. I have released versions after versions. I have uh, 5.4 at the moment as a version and about 3 million downloads, so it's pretty popular. And long time ago, when I started in 2009, there was only WPF pretty much. So I decided, okay, I'm going to do a class library for WPF. And then, like I said, came Silverlight. And so I did two class libraries, one for WPF, one for Silverlight. And I shared code using the technique I showed you just before. And then came Windows Phone, and I had three projects, and came Windows 8, and I had four, and it started to be a little bit tricky. And so at some point, the portable class library team at Microsoft came to me and said, we'd like to take your project and port it to portable class library as kind of a sample project like to try things out. Are you okay with that? I said, yes, of course, free labor. Huh? Why not? Okay, do it. And um, one individual in particular, Oren Novotny, a good friend of mine, uh, did most of the work and it was a little bit tricky because when you go really from a full-blown class library for .NET to portable class libraries, you have to do a few tricks and shortcuts and, and, and sometimes find some workarounds to stuff who don't work like you would expect. But then the work was done and so I had one project that I could use on WPF, on certain versions of, of Silverlight, on Xamarin, on Windows. So I was quite happy because it's, it's nice to have that. So then later I decided to port that to .NET Standard when it came out. So that's cool. But of course, I had to consider the architecture. So let's take a quick tour in the architecture of MVVM Lite. So it's a small project, okay? It's not huge in terms of lines of code and everything, but it has an architecture and there is a reason for that. So basically I have the core components, what I call the core, okay? Which is pretty much everything except the IOC container. We'll talk about that in a second, which is in a library called Galasoft.MVVM Lite. And that's a portable class library. And then when I developed my IOC container around 2010, this time frame, there was a good idea floating around Microsoft Patterns and Practices, which is a team where they do a lot of research and development, this kind of thing. They released a specification called the Common Service Locator. And they said, well, the idea is that if your IOC container, everybody knows what an IOC container is, or I need to quickly explain. Raise your hand if you don't know and don't be shy, right? I didn't know in the beginning as well. Okay, so just quickly to explain, okay? IOC container is a way, it's like a cache for your application where you can say, well, I'm going to cache a service connecting to Azure. I'm going to cache, uh, I don't know, a, a dialogue service which is going to show dialogues, for example. Why do you want to cache it? Well, the cool thing is that you can have an abstraction. You can say my iCloud service is supporting a method called refresh, for example. But then I can have multiple implementation. I can have one implementation for macOS, one implementation for iOS, one implementation for Windows, etc. And so you say, uh, I want to get from the cache the iCloud service, and then it's going to give you the implementation that has been registered. Okay, it's uh, basically a way to implement something called dependency injection. Quite convenient. So back then there was this huge movement where everybody was releasing an IOC container framework, and Microsoft said, well, you know, it would be cool if we were all supporting common service locator. Like this, if you want to switch from one to the other, like let's say you're starting with the MVVM Lite IOC container, and then at some point you say, no, no, I want to switch to another one. There are a few names, Unity, Autofac, etc. Then you can do it. Sounded like a good idea, so I decided to implement that, and my IOC container is in a different class library called the Extras, and I have a dependency on that. Why a different class library? Well, it's quite complicated when you work with a firm who wants to use your open source project. Sometimes they have to jump through some hoops. They have to sign papers, go through proc uh, procurement. Okay, that's really complicated. And they have to do that pretty much for everything they want to use. So if they want to use MVVM Lite, they have to do that. And then suddenly they see, oh, there is a dependency to common service locator and they have to go through the same process again, which is really annoying. Some people don't want to do that. So with this architecture, they are able to use the core but if they don't want to use common service locator, they just get rid of that and they can still use the core, but not the extras. Okay, makes sense. Now, in addition to that, I also have some platforms components. Why platform? Well, it's because I have, for example, certain things which run only on Android or only on iOS. For example, I have a data binding system in Windows. I don't need it because there is a data binding system in Windows already. So you don't need that. 
but in Android and iOS, I developed one, so I put it in a platform component. Then I also have some platform components which are specific to .NET or specific to UWP. And of course, this is the architecture that we have on the portable class library version of MVVM Lite. Cool.